Hello, my friends, one more time. Uh, here is Sylvia and welcome to Secrets of Success. Today, I have honor to bring you one of the most successful coaches in the world, international speaker, uh, executive coach, author for more than seven books. I, I need to check. I know that they, David is the person who is a master in writing and adding value to other people. So uh, I want to ask David, how did he become so successful how did he came where he is today so I hope that this time David uh, uh, will join us uh, immediately okay so yes everything is working now uh, I'm super excited stay with us we are here um, hello 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 from my hammy in the USA Sylvia <laughs> hi David it's so nice to see you and have your secrets of success thank you so we had some technical problems probably from my side as well sometimes that happens in life but it's important that we have will to do this interview and thank you david for thank you giving your time my fault. i did not know how to find you here <laughs> <laughs> it's here all good it's Yes, here we are. Uh, David, um, I created this show, Secrets of Success, where I really choose people that I'm going to invite in because I want to be sure that their level of success and their values are in the line with my values. And you are one of the person that I truly admire, I respect, and I would be honored if you would share with me and uh, tell to my audience how did you start it? How did you became such a successful coach, author, international speaker, spoke all over the world, share stages with Tony Robbins, Robert Kiyosaki, Zig Ziglar, JT Fox, Mark Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg Mel Gibson. I, I would like, there's a, so many successes that I don't think I even have a time to tell everything. So please, David, tell us how did it start it? And, and were you always so successful? Sylvia, thank you very much. The answer is no. I started in a very small village in Africa. I could not even speak English. I used to go to school barefoot. And oh. as a kid, I was put in school in a group that was called the Sick, Lame, and Lazy group. Sick, and, Lame, and Lazy. <laughs> yeah, and, and I didn't want to be there. A doctor said I had a heart problem. And so they put you into this group, the sick, lame, and lazies, and your job in the school is to pull out weeds in the schoolyard. So this really hurt me a lot. I felt that I do not belong there. And so outside of school, I would go to the library in the small village every day, and I would study every afternoon. And I would <laughs> go for runs in the wilderness and chop wood and run up mountains and carry rocks to become strong. <laughs> wow. And so by the age of 16, by the age of 16, I had my own karate school teaching karate in a small village in Africa. And I started to make really good money. In fact, I was making more money than my school teachers. <laughs> so this is how I started oh, wow. really in a very small village in Africa. <laughs> Oh, wow. So you say karate. David, I'm just going to ask you, like, uh, you know, we never spoke about, or maybe we just mentioned a little bit about it. I also did karate for, for a lot of years and, and kickbox as well. And, and what do you think, David, did influence of, of karate and that mindset had a big impact for your success where you are today? Yes, absolutely. Because I started winning many, many tournaments, winning gold medals mm -hmm. and silver medals. And so I realized that I'm not sick, lame and lazy, but really it mm -hmm. was the discipline, as you know, Sylvia, of yes. thousands of hours of practice and more practice and more practice. I think that is really what planted the seed for all my success is the discipline to do the work. And of course, when you start winning, then it builds your confidence even more, right? So uh, yes. <laughs> I then realized that I have a great ability to teach people because I was running my own school already. Mm -hmm. And I realized to be an entrepreneur. Now, my mother only had two years of school education in Africa. She didn't have much school education, but she became very, very successful in international fashion, mm -hmm. even out of a little village in Africa. 
And so I realized that the best thing to do is to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> this is amazing. Wow, what a story. I mean, you, you are bringing tears to my eyes. I'm just, you know, holding myself a little bit back. This is amazing, David. When, when I listen to your story and your mother's story as well, this is so inspiring. And I just want to say for, say for everyone who are joining at the moment, if you are in the lowest point of your life or thinking you're living in a small village, listen to David's story because you can be successful as well. David, you mentioned something that is we know both extremely important discipline but we are from the other side all humans you know uh tell me of course what would be aside all successes that you had were there any lowest points of your life when you started building your career yes yes of course there were many life is not just easy and just success right along the <laughs> path of success there are many failures so when I came out of the military, Sylvia, mm -hmm. I had much difficulties with my mindset adjusting back into civilian life. Mm -hmm. And so for a short period of time, I was homeless. And homeless. I had mm -hmm. to go to shooting ranges and dig out bullets, the bullet tips from the sand walls, and sell it to the scrap metal dealers just to be able to buy food. And from there, I had to save up money I could not afford a car, so I bought a scooter. And not long after that, I drove to a Rolls Royce dealership with my scooter and hid it behind the back and <laughs> walked in the front and bought myself a Rolls Royce. But it did not start with the Rolls Royce. It started first <laughs> with, with a lot of walking. So that was the first time. And the second time, yeah, in the city of Miami, where I'm sitting now today, I'm also very fortunate to have received the key of freedom from the city of Miami. But wow. when I first came here to America, I was for a short time also homeless here in Miami, right? After a tragedy in my family, um, I lost everything. There was a death, there was a divorce, and I lost everything. And I also lost my, my mojo. I lost my focused mindset. Mm -hmm. And so it was not always easy. But thank God, there were also many, many great successes, many victories. But one must never think life is only victory. There will be some setbacks along the way that is normal. You just have to dust yourself off and continue. <laughs> yes, yes. And don't I, try to I, do I, it alone. You need coaches, right? You need a coach like Sylvia. You, you and, cannot yes. do it by yourself because you don't know what you don't know. <laughs> I agree with you, David. I would not be here, and thank you for accomplishing and putting this out. I would not be here where I am if I didn't have support of the coaches and successful people and the stories as well that, that were hard. So would you agree with me, David, that um, each of us has a difficult story, has some scars, and that it's our obligation when we go through that pain to share our stories as example that nothing is impossible? Yes, absolutely. We have an obligation to share that story with others, to give them hope, to give them inspiration. So mm -hmm. I always say, when you choose a coach, and I've had great coaches, and my coaches' coaches, you know, J.T. Fox and um, George Ross and Hugh Hilton and mm -hmm. all those wonderful people. But when I choose a coach, the best coach for you is somebody who started with less than you, who had greater difficulties than you. So you cannot make excuses. So if your yes. coach started <laughs> with less than you and now have the life that you want, this is a good coach for you. Yes, absolutely. David, we are short with time, but I have, I have some, uh, I'm going to ask you some questions that are extremely important. I always ask that. Okay. We know that in business, we need to be focused. We need to be disciplined. We need to have strategy, systems, thinking about branding, marketing. There's a, there's a whole science uh, behind that. But one thing that I always love to ask, and I would really love to ask you that, what is the part and what role in your life and a business has God? Yes, absolutely. I had three billionaires as mentors in my life. And each one of these three billionaires told me to never underestimate the spiritual dimension of success, the spiritual mm. dimension of business, of life, of relationships. There is a spiritual dimension in everything. 
And so you will hear that I talk about 11x, Sylvia. You will hear I talk mm -hmm. about 22x and 108x. Why? Because these are spiritual master numbers. And to acknowledge that there is a God energy in the universe that is mm -hmm. greater than us, and to realize that we live in a benevolent universe, there's more than enough of everything for all of us. That the yes. God energy have provided abundance, but we have to be aligned with this energy if we're going to tap into this and find our destiny partners and our greatest possible success. So it's a very important part and often mm -hmm. a very neglected part in business conversations. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, David. I felt that this when I had, and for the p people who didn't, uh, who don't know this, I had a personally uh, experience meeting David live in, in, in Los Angeles and hearing his amazing speech for more than, uh, it was almost 3,000 entrepreneurs for, for seven, uh, 72 countries. So your speech, David, one more time, really touched my heart. And this what I felt it that I need to ask you, I felt it there in Los Angeles, your heart is radiated and you are sp uh, spreading this positive energy. So I know that you are doing a lot of, lot of things and helping many in, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, CEOs around the world. But when people have a chance to see you live, to feel you, to be next to you, this is something special. This is something exclusive. Thank, and thank you. <laughs> uh, tell us, David, what are, the, what are the things that you're working on now? Do you have any uh, events maybe where people could have opportunity to come, to listen to you, to ask you for advice that you help them as well? Yes, thank you, Sylvia, for asking. Sylvia, I just want to quickly say, Another time we need to talk about this, I had five near-death experiences. And oh, wow. in those near-death experiences, that is when I really started to understand the spiritual connection. But that's a conversation for another day. Yes, yes, yes. We have an event mm -hmm. coming up in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. On <laughs> September yes. 15 and 16. September 15 and 16, Las Six. Vegas, Nevada. I know you're busy with your own event that weekend. Yeah, Otherwise, Amsterdam. I would love yeah. to have you there. And I see you have wonderful people watching your show. I recognize many of the people's names. And for all of you, as long as tickets are available, we are offering free tickets for two days live with my team and myself in Las Vegas. So you can check me out on my Facebook page for more information. And another time, yes. Sylvia, we want you to come and meet us in Las Vegas and come speak at our event in Las Vegas. I absolutely accept this invitation, David. Thank you so much. So uh, let's just say, uh, let's just see who, who join us. Silvej, Lila, Angela. We have USA. We have Croatia. We have Germany. Croatia as well. Uh, Denver, Munich, the international people. David, thank you so much for being um, my guest in Secrets of Success. Next time, uh, I'm going to crisscross all my fingers and put my prayers that uh, I'm going to have opportunity to share your story and uh, about your dad experiences that you had so i'm inviting you again to come and be my guest uh, in secrets of success you are very welcome and thank you so much for this opportunity much love <laughs> thank you david bye bye thank you bye bye now bye bye everybody bye bye sylvia <laughs>